So I'm here in my comfies and I'm about to show you how I'm going to draw a rabbit. So I'm so sweet enough. He took four one by sixes and he glued them together for me. And I can't draw, but I'm a pretty good cheater. So what I've got here is I like from the dollar store, the wrapping paper, the brown wrapping paper. So I'm going to count in from 11, and I'm going to do mark the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, I'm going to leave it in one spot here. I give you the mm -hmm. I'll give you the actual pattern to the body. I'll copy it, I'll put it on I'll run uh, eight and a half by elevens and you can put it I don't know, that still looks too tall to me. How about I make it fifteen? It'll give me a third of the height for the rabbit for the body. I think that's what I'll do. So here's my body part, give or take, and then if the bottom part is 15, the middle part will make 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I can do my middle body. That's where my middle will be. 15, 10. How about I make the head 8? Yeah, because 15, there's five difference between them. And then two. Yeah, I'll make the head eight and give it, make his ears a little bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's his head. There we go. And his ears will be up to the top. Yeah, her ears. Now, when you're drawing any of this kind of stuff, like I said, I'm, I can't draw. I you can draw half the rabbit and then trace it to the other half. So what I like to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my rabbit here and I'll pick which side I like better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. So let me get this clean. Put it over here. So I'll make the waist go in about three inches on this side. And two inches here, maybe, because I want it to be as well. Seven and a half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Is it right here? Right here. Now, my, and when you're doing yours too, it's liable to break because it's not plywood. We're working on. One by sixes, and like there's a seam right here, and so when I hit it with my pen, pencil, my little pencil, it tends to break. So here's my middle, there's my bottom of my bunny. What I want to have on it, I wanted it to be big enough that I could put Hoppy Easter on the front. I don't know, maybe a flower or a carrot or some sort of thing, I don't know. So the next part's 10. We said we made this one, what, 20? So I want this one narrower. I'm going to make it... No, let's make it 14. Maybe 15, we'll see. One, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's middle here.
So if I brought this one in three inches, I'm gonna bring this one in an inch and a half. It's right about there, I guess, eh? There we go, an inch and a half. See, that's why it's important to count all the time. I would have had it pop them up, sat it on that side. That's right where my line was. I shouldn't have ripped it out. So I'm going to go like this. Move the camera so you can see the top. Let's make the, this one I said was 20, and then we made this one 14, which is six inches difference. If we make this one three inches difference, I'll make it 11. Right? So let's make this one 11 inches by hand. So one, two, three, four, five and a half on this side. I think the head's going to be more round than the body, so I think I'll start at two inches in on the top here. And we'll fiddle around with what the head shape once I get kind of done. So that's three and a half on this side, so three and a half. That's where it, my my pen hit the my pen hit the wood there, and it messed up my curve. This one here looks funny because of the, like I said, it messed up my curve for me. So I like this, this side's much rounder. Now, when I'm actually cutting this out, what I'll do is I'll pick a side that I like better, and I'll fold it in half. You'll see me in the for sure. Move this up again a little bit more. So you can only make our ears as tall as the wood, so I want them to be as big and beautiful as possible. I'm going to start them right as it comes, just on the inside of them. I go start from an inch here on each side, here and here. I probably could make them three inches wide. Yeah, yeah, let's go for the gusto. I'll put them here right in the middle. Well, hello. Hello. I told people that you'd come and say hi to mom. Hi, say hi. There he is. That's my friend. So. I'm going to take it and drop from here, down here, 
and the drama here. I kind of want the top of the ear rounded, actually, I think. So we'll do that. all drawn out okay so you could make them like that and keep them not quite so symmetrical they'd be really good like that actually i think mean, he's really cute matter of fact he's pretty cute. but if you want to make him symmetrical what you do i'll make him perfect for each side and i've actually decided i don't want to do that so what you would do, I'm not going to do it. What you're going to do is you'd, you'd cut him out. You'd fold him in the middle and then cut out the half you like. Then you open him up and you have a paper copy of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I better do it to show you. This one is kind of sticking out a little bit. Didn't look like it. here right here in the middle seam so it stays a new turkey now here's the bunny as hubs built him for me uh, he put these white rackets on as you can see they cover all the cracks or the braces between the wood but they're not on the outside okay he actually had this them white so I'm going to take them outside or ask him to sand them so that I can stain them along with the back of the rabbit but I think he looks great now we're going to get busy and put them on the stand so here's a scrap piece of lumber we had left over from the ear portion on the top of the head so I'm getting Herman to cut out the top about three inches right where I'm pointing and he'll take it out and chop it off in the shop for me so that we can put it on this stand. I'm going to quickly show you what I'm doing here is fiddling around measuring it so that it's equal both vertically and horizontally on the stand and then I'm going to add some L brackets to it. You can get these little L brackets at the dollar store. Uh, they don't have to be heavy duty for this, they just, but they're a really nice way to keep the bunny straight and standing up and attached to the bottom without having to put any, uh, drill any holes or anything into the underside of the bunny and maybe crack the lumber. So I just thought this was an easier way. I think those are three quarter inch screws. We just dug around and got some small odds and ends that I had kicking around the house. So... This part of the year where we live is beyond frustrating because we can't work outside yet. Matter of fact, we can't work comfort too comfortably in our garage yet. So I have my rabbit set up in my front foyer. So it gets a chance to dry overnight tonight. I'm going to do the back now. I'll let it dry. And then tomorrow, I will do the front. Okay. 
again because of the weather I have to do this in the house it's not even warm enough in the garage so this is late in the evening I'm doing the back side including the cross pieces uh, in the stain we're just gonna put the stain on there and then I like it quite dark it's close to chocolate bunny dark chocolate bunny as I can get it so I'm letting the stain st sit for a couple of seconds before I wipe it off and I do all the different sections like that. Plop it on. Do it around. You'll notice that we haven't sanded yet. We're going to sand right um, towards the end. We'll go around the edges and sand that to give it a rough finish and remove any slivers. Now as soon as this is done, I go to bed. And then you'll see in the video where I flip it over and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Um, I'm really happy about doing it, uh, getting our bunny done. I think it's turning out great. But it was a little bit snarky about all the mess in my house while I got this done. This is garage work, darn it. But if you can see, uh, I just paint it on with a sponge brush. Take the cloth and wipe it off. And continued that for the entire surface of the bunny. Then I went and had my morning coffee. These are the wires you need for this bunny. They come from the dollar store, I think, in the florist section. The first time I did this, the bunny broke, so we're not going to staple it. We're going to glue it this time. There's my our little thin piece of board. And I took the already cut in half wires and I took another the last piece of wire there and I wrapped it around the middle to create some bunny whiskers we're going to glue them just with hot glue this time and I'm going to let that dry first then I'll go back afterwards after that dries and cools then I will go ahead and I will put it on the bunny I decided not to give the bunny a hoppy Easter sign and, and then I was looking at putting a hook there and I changed my mind on that. You could do that for a wreath. But what I've decided to do is I'm going to just give it a face and a ribbon. And you know right from the beginning remember me saying we weren't going to sand it? Well I went this is where I wanted to sand. I'm going to go all around the bunny and make sure there's no slivers and I want to make sh give it a little bit of a white line there just using the sandpaper now the really easy right in the middle here right up in between I couldn't use the block I took a little piece of sandpaper I think it was 120 and just did it by hand right my little fingertips right in there I think it looks great like that the cool part about now that we've got the nose put the nose on I give it a large dab of glue there and I put it on and once you've got that in you've kind of got your center central point for your face makes them really easy to do I let that dry for a little bit and then came back and using a sharpie I drew two 
oblong shapes above the eyes or for the eyes above his little nose. And because I'm anything but an artist, you can see where one eye is a little higher than the other. So then I just took a straight edge I had nearby and I evened them out. Then I hummed and hawed and finally decided to give him two little, a little nose and with the little mouth behind. You could give him teeth too, but I decided not to, but I did give him some dark black freckles. And in no time our little face is done. I did, in the video, I decided to take it out and shorten it. Um, I had several different ribbons I could use, and I, I chose these two. One says cream buffalo check that I've had for eons. The other one is a pink one I think I got in Hobby Lobby when I was on the state in on holidays in the United States a year or so ago when COVID first ended. So what I did was I made one, I folded it over and then glued it in the middle. Repeated it again using this beautiful peachy pink kind of ribbon. I did that in, in again. I often just tie ribbons, but for this I decided I wanted it perfect and I didn't have a lot of that pink ribbon, so I didn't want to get it wrong. So this is a pretty good way you do it in steps and then you can see exactly what you're doing. Once that was done, I took a piece of the same wire that I used for the whiskers and I wrapped it around the middle of the bow, or the middle of the tails, and then I wrapped it around the middle of the bow to connect everything. So these carrots, when I was making them, I didn't manage to be in the frame of the camera. So all they are is, Hubs cut me two long thin pieces of wood, they're very thin, like quarter inch plywood. And I painted them orange. Then I made a tail, a little ribbon, a little bow on top and attached one to the other using string very much like you would children's mittens 
and I'm just going to hang them down with glue on the left hand side of my bunny and then I'm putting the ribbon on top to cover that glue And then for the rest of the video here, you're going to see where I trim the ends of my ribbons and I curl them and just kind of fiddle around with them until they look the way I want them to. I'm really excited about how this bunny turned out, mainly because of how affordable it was. I don't think it cost us, well, it cost me $18 to buy the stain. Everything else I had. Now, if I'd have had the stain, even if you were to buy everything, it's not that expensive because you can get that thin wood from the Dollar Tree. You can get ribbon from the Dollar Tree, a Sharpie pen, and if you had to buy the lumber, you can make it with pallets. If, even if you had to buy the lumber, you're only using two 8-foot lengths of 2x6s, so it's still very inexpensive to put together. And much, much, much larger and more impressive than anything you can purchase, because it's almost 4 feet tall. You'll be able to see it from the street when people drive by. So after this, you're going to see me go ahead there. I'm going to glue the ribbon so it stays in shape. It stays kind of puckered like that. So now after, as soon as I get that to attach, you're going to see, I'm going to start on the ears. Now they're very simple to do because you have them already there. I just drew a pencil sketch on the inside of the ear, about an inch from the edge all the way around. And then I took some soft pink paint I had in my stash. It was too dark for me, so I added some more white and got a really light pink. All right, I'm doing my little drawing. And then you paint in, basically you color inside, or paint inside the lines. I dry painted it because I wanted, did not want it to be, I wanted it to be more like a shadow or a hint than to actually be a painted section. I hope that makes sense. This time I got a little smarter and went and grabbed a straight edge so that I made sure the top and the bottom was the exact same height. The two ears matched. And then I'm just going to repeat the same process on this side. I did speed up this section of the video because doing this I am being careful. It's always easier to add paint than to take some off. And as soon as we're done this, our little bunny is finished. I think it looks great. And 
I you will see it standing up in amongst a some of my plants that I currently have in the house for spring uh, you don't need me to whine about the weather anymore but that's why I have to show you the final pictures I did them on the front door inside the house instead of outside the house but eventually they'll get to go outside Happy crafting. Talk, see you soon.